So welcome everybody to the How to Make Your Smartphone Smarter While Abroad workshop. My name is Rachel Rigoli. I am one of the advisors in the Study Abroad office. And thank you all for being here today. So here's our agenda. It's going to be a short session and then there will be time for questions at the end, but we're gonna talk about SIM cards and, and unlocking your phone, phone and plan options, um, using mapping and language apps while you're abroad, um, useful apps for staying connected, and then additional apps that you might want to consider adding to your phone, and then um, talking about backups. And then, like I said, we'll have time at the end for questions. So I want to first talk about what a SIM card is. I, I'm assuming most of you do know what a SIM card is, but every once in a while there are um, students that aren't sure what I'm talking about when I mention a SIM card. And a SIM card is in this picture right here. It's a, in the top left corner. It's a little white card that lives inside your phone and it's provided by your cell phone service and it makes your phone work, basically work. It, get, it gives you data. It gives you um, the ability to make phone calls and texts and all of that. So your SIM card is tied to your cell phone service pro provider here in the United States. Um, and typically when you purchase a phone, your phone will be locked. And unless you purposefully purchased a phone knowing it was unlocked, your phone, my guess, is locked. And so the first thing you're going to need to find out before you plan on using your phone abroad, and if that's what you decide you want to do is to take your phone overseas with you, you're going to need to talk to your cell phone service provider and find out if your phone is locked or unlocked. And if your phone is locked, you're going to need to find out from them how to unlock it. And it can sometimes take, you know, I don't know, like 24, 48 hours. They, I think they send you a code and then you have to put the code into your phone. So you wanna find out from them how to do that. Sometimes phones can't be unlocked. And if you don't own your phone outright, like let's say you're doing a monthly payment plan with your provider, my guess is that you won't be able to unlock your phone before you leave. So that might change what you do in terms of the service um, when you're abroad. And we'll talk about that. I'm assuming most phones nowadays have SIM card technology. Um, Verizon back in the day didn't, but I think they all phones come with a SIM card slot. But when you talk to your cell phone uh, service provider, ask them about your phone and if it does have a SIM card that you're currently using. And you'll also want to find out with your phone if it has a dual SIM card. And a lot of the newer phones have two SIM card capability. One is a, an actual physical uh, SIM card slot where this white card goes. And the other one will be an eSIM card. And what an eSIM card is, is it um, allows uh, your service provider to connect your uh, phone number to um, an electronic SIM card. So it doesn't, it's not tied to that little white card anymore. It's actually tied to an electro, electric SIM card. And so I, just to give you an example, I have a iPhone 10R or XR, whatever you call it. And I have T-Mobile and I have a dual SIM card. I have an e-SIM card and then a physical SIM card slot. And before I traveled, I called T-Mobile and I said, please connect my US phone number to the eSIM card. So they had to go into their computer and assign it to the eSIM card. And then when I travel over abroad, abroad with my unlocked phone, I can buy a local SIM card and work with an on-site uh, cell phone service and be able to get local service while I'm traveling or living overseas. So um, find out if you have that capability. If you don't and you have one SIM card slot, what will happen is you'll take out the SIM card from the US if you decide to get a SIM card abroad. And we're gonna, in the next slide, talk about your, your phone options. Um, and you would just hang on to that US SIM card for your cell phone service provider, if it's T-Mobile or, or AT&T or whoever, and you would hang on to that because you would want it you know, put it back in your phone when you come back to the US. Your phone number is tied to that. If you're calling your cell phone service provider, you're going to also want to ask them about international service plans. So I know several of you said that you are going for the summer. And so maybe for the summer, you decide that um, cost wise, it's going to be the easiest to just um, take out an international plan. And it can really vary by provider on the cost. So you'll want to talk to them about that. 
So using your phone abroad, your, your phone is only as useful as you, you know, if you can have service connected to it. So um, I already mentioned talking to your current service provider about getting international service. Um, if you don't have an unlocked phone, this may be the best option for you. Uh, it can vary, like I said, in terms of cost. I've heard of some of the providers um, charging you uh, for data and uh, cell phone service like per day, like it might be $10 per day and you only pay for what you use. So if you're on Wi-Fi all day, you don't need to access your, your phone's data or um, you, know, you can text through you know, iMessage or whatever and you don't need to access the data, then you only pay for what you use. Um, some will maybe have like a monthly amount that you can pay that gives you unlimited. So you'll just want to talk to them about what the options are. The other option would be to get a, a local plan. And that's, you know, sort of what I was talking about when I mentioned um, buying a SIM card in country where you're going. So you own, say, or at Korea or Edinburgh, um, and you would... Um, at the orientation, when you arrive, they should talk to you about some of the more popular uh, cell phone services, and you can go into an into a store with your unlocked phone and say, "I want to find out about the plans." Um, you definitely want to find out that your you know what your options are in terms of not committing to a long term contract. So probably you'd want to do something prepaid where you add money to the account. You know when your data runs low. Um, but that's probably one of the more popular options for our students who are going on semester and year long programs. Again, if you're going on a shorter program in the summer, um, maybe it's just not worth the effort and the time to, to, to set something up, um, but it's going to be dependent on the cost that your, your US service provider will charge you to use your phone abroad. The other options, if you don't have an unlocked phone, would be to borrow or buy an unlocked phone. So sometimes, you know, family members or friends, they got a new phone and they have an old phone sitting in a drawer that's a good phone, and maybe it's an unlocked phone. And if it's unlocked, you can um, just drop a SIM card when you go abroad um, into that unlocked phone and just use it. Um, so you're good to go. Um, or you could consider buying an unlocked phone before you go, maybe not spend a lot of money, something that is, you know, like a prepaid um, sort of cheaper phone that you might find at Target or um, at T-Mobile. I um, mean, you would just, again, need to make sure that it's an unlocked phone. Uh, the last option would be to sign up for a local service in country with a phone connected to that service. And if you're going for the summer, I wouldn't recommend this. Um, if you're going for a full year, definitely that could be a good option um, or possibly for a semester. But if you decide to do that, you want to do some research or talk to students who've been to the location where you're going to be studying abroad, because you'll want to find out, um, it, you know, are there contracts or in order to get the phone with the service plan. And then I know, you know, a lot of our students who study abroad like to travel on weekends or they might travel before or after the program ends. So if you do get a, um, you know, connect your US phone service with an international plan or you get something in country, find out where the service is good for. So is it only, you know, good for Italy or Korea? And if you travel elsewhere, now you're gonna be paying extra fees. Um, so ask those questions um, when you decide what the best service is for you. So I wanted to talk about some mapping apps because when you are um, in a new location, you're not going to necessarily know your way around. And you're probably going to be dependent on your smartphone to get you from point A to B. So these are um, these three apps that I have listed here, City Mapper, um, this is Google, and then Maps.me. Um, those are probably the three most popular uh, public transportation and mapping apps. Um, if you have an, an iPhone, you can certainly use Apple Maps, uh, but I, I've just found that um, you know, Google tends to be better abroad worldwide, so I would certainly, um, I'm going to talk about different Google Map features um, in a second, but Maps.me and City Mapper are popular options for using your um, maps and searching for uh, getting directions uh, while you're offline. 
I personally use maps.me when I know like maybe I'm not going to have a lot of data or I'm not going to have data at all. And you have to download the city or country maps while you're on Wi-Fi. And then you can use the app completely offline, no data. It's, it's really wonderful. I don't, I haven't really used City Mapper. It tends to be really popular in Europe. And it will give you, you know, how to get from point A to B using public transportation or walking, et cetera. I do know that they have maps for um, some locations in Asia. They tend to not have um, a lot of maps for Latin or South America or Africa. So um, Google and maps.me. And then if you're going to um, certain locations, City Mapper could be a good option for you as well. The other, um, uh, thing I wanted to mention is Lonely Planet, which is a guidebook series. They do physical guidebooks, but they have a lot of um, um, useful travel resources on their apps. They do provide uh, free city, city walking tours for different cities around the world. So that might be something you, you want to consider um you know if you're traveling after you know if you're going somewhere for the weekend and you want to use that app to um, see the sites around town and then there is a very useful um, website called too many adapters.com and they give a lot of google maps uh tips and i'm going to go through some of them but i would certainly recommend that site and i will put it in the chat let me see if i can do that right now Okay, so I put that in the chat for you all so you can use that, um, you know, access that website. You can also use Google Maps offline. A lot of people don't know this, um, but you have to use, you see the red arrow right here, the, the three little dots. And the reason why this is useful is you, you might be on Wi-Fi and you want to download um, directions or, um, you know, multiple directions, you can add multiple routes. So like, let's say you're going to stop at the Eiffel Tower, and then you want to go to the Louvre, and then you want to go to the Latin Quarter, you can put three locations, and it's going to give you the route, and then you can download it. So that's really useful in case you're worried that you may not have, um, you know, great data, and your, your maps are running slowly, you can download the map ahead of time. I also want to include a screenshot here of directions using Google Maps. And when you're abroad, you're going to see different options that will show up. Um, we always see the car. Um, but if you're in Europe or a location where you use the, you know, the locals are using public transportation a lot, you're going to see the local transportation as well. So you're going to see this is an icon for train. Um, you see the icon for walking, you see a, a person like, you know, with her hand up, and that's for a ride share. You'll also see buses if buses are being used. This, this icon right here on the first one where it says they have to walk and then they take a bus, bus number 100, um, and it tells them the cost um, to take the bus. And it's really useful. Google Maps, it's not, a, it's not a perfect science, but a lot of times they'll show you buses in real time so you can make a decision on which bus to catch. Um, but when you hit the, you know, the, where it says 41 minutes and there's a little um, arrow, it will give you sort of the step-by-step -step guide of what to do. So it's really useful. Um, you, can, you can add, like I said, um, additional stops as well. And then on the right hand side on the screen is the search feature. So if you're out and about and you pull up Google Maps, not to, to find directions from point A to B, but you want to search the surrounding area, you can use the search here option to look for like coffee shops or restaurants. When I travel or I'm, you know, I'm overseas, I use this all the time because I don't know what's around me. And then actually a lot of times I think it has the Google reviews. So you can look to see if there's a, you know, a cafe or a restaurant that got good reviews right near you when you're, you know, somewhere and you're hungry and you need to go find something to eat. And it will, um, there is a show list option at the bottom. So that's, that's a really nice feature for Google Maps as well. I also want to talk about language apps. Um, you know, I know some of you are going to non-English speaking countries. I encourage you, if you don't speak the local language of where you're studying abroad, that you learn 
some of the language before you get on the airplane. So I recommend that you download Duolingo. You may have heard of, about it already. It's a wonderful language app and you can um, learn a little bit of Korean or whatever language you're gonna, you know, uh, is the local language where you're gonna be studying abroad. You can start now and add it to your phone and it's, you can do it daily. Um, definitely try and familiarize yourself with some common phrases and Duolingo is a great way to get started on that. Um, also, if you are sitting abroad or traveling um, to non-English speaking countries, absolutely download Google Translate. This is a wonderful app and I have pictures here. You can do um, voice. So let's say you put in um, a phrase or a question or a word, you can have Google say it back to you so you can hear how to pronounce or say, say the sentence or the question that you might have, or you can play it for the person you're interacting with. You can also um, just look up, um, you know, if you see a street sign or you see something and you're not sure what it is, you can look it up by writing in it. And then there is a camera feature, which I really love. I use this a lot in Japan. And if I went to like a grocery store or um, like in the hotel room when I wasn't sure how to use a remote control because it was in Japanese, I would pull up the Google Translate, use the camera feature and hold it over the, um, the Japanese. And it wasn't, it wasn't perfect, but it, it would give me a general idea what, what the, um, you know, what the different buttons were for. So um, the camera feature is really cool too. Like if you need to, to read a sign or maybe ingredients on the back of a, you know, uh, um, you know, a package or whatever. So definitely recommend Google Translate. And then we know that you're going to want to stay connected while you're abroad. I, you know, everybody's on social media. It's easy to do Instagram and it's easy um, to stay connected um, through Snapchat and all that. But it's really common for um, a lot of people around the world to use um, different apps. Um, to stay connected. And so WhatsApp on the left-hand side is probably the most popular, or most common you're going to find um, that individuals use while they're overseas. So certainly download it. If you don't have WhatsApp, get it set up um, for your family and your friends that you want to stay connected with that maybe they're not on Instagram or Snapchat, or they don't have FaceTime, have them download WhatsApp as well. Um, when you text using WhatsApp and you send pictures, it condenses the photos, so it doesn't use a lot of space on your phone. Also, you can use WhatsApp on Wi-Fi, but you can also use it on data. And so you can make um, video calls, you can text, you can do group text. Um, it's really useful. Um, Viber is another option. It doesn't tend to be as popular. Um, I always have WhatsApp and Viber on my phone and I ask my loved ones to put the, them on their phones as well. Um, and this is, you're doing this because you don't want to have to pay long distance phone rates. You know, you're not going to want to call at 20 cents a minute. Um, so you're going to be using internet based apps to be able to stay connected. Um, I, the reason why I have Viber and WhatsApp is sometimes like if I'm on Wi-Fi you know, WhatsApp may work one time and then Viber works better the next time. So you'll just have to see, you know, depending on what your Wi-Fi is like, where you're all, where you are. Like if you're traveling and you're in a hotel, maybe one's going to be better than the other. And then obviously if you have Apple products, you can do FaceTime and iMessage. Line is more common in, in Japan. Um, Skype, actually a lot of people around the world still use Skype. I would say it's not as popular in the United States, but it would be a good app to have on your phone. Um, especially all of these when you're traveling, like you may need to connect with your Airbnb host or, um, you know, just connect about like you sign up for a tour and they're on WhatsApp. Um, so you're going to want these, these, um, these communication apps on your phone. And then this bottom left one is for Facebook Messenger. I know your generation really doesn't use Facebook much. But uh, Messenger is pretty common around the world. So you might want to have Messenger loaded on your phone as well. And then these two other photos that I have here, the top right one is about journaling. Um, um, you know, stay connected to yourself while you're studying abroad. And if you haven't journaled, when you're studying abroad is a great time to start journaling. 
Uh, and there's something about having a, a pen and paper and writing down at the end of the day what your day was like. It's a great way to, you know, remember your experience when you, when you, you know, a year later and you can go through and look, read your journal entries. And then I did want to, you know, give a shout out to the old school path. Um, postcards. Um, I know a lot of people don't send or receive postcards anymore, but you'll see them when you're when you're you know living abroad. And there's it's just really fun um, to get a postcard. So if you um, see postcards and um, you know have you need the fit, you need that your friends and family's mailing addresses. A lot of us don't even have that, so you want to collect that ahead of time. And send them a postcard. It's going to really make their day. And it, it will force you to go into the post office and have that interaction, sort of see how, how it works in the country where you're, where you're studying abroad. So other useful apps in, in terms of just living overseas and, and traveling as well, um, you know, having a good Wi-Fi finder on your phone if you're out and about and maybe you don't have data or you don't, you know, want to spend the money if you're using one of those international um, service plans, um, you can, there's a ton of different Wi-Fi finders. I would certainly just go to your app store and look at what is probably has the best reviews. And that can help you find Wi-Fi when you're, um, when you're out and about. Um, we also know Starbucks, you know, has Wi-Fi. You go in and buy a coffee and you can use their Wi-Fi. Uh, TripIt is a really useful app for those of you that are going to be traveling on weekends or traveling before or after the program ends. Um, it is an app that will consolidate all your itineraries. So your flight information, your hotel information, maybe your train or bus ticket. And you can send it to your TripIt app and you can have everything in one place. So it's a really useful app if, if um, it's something you think that, you know, would help you uh, stay organized. I also recommend that you download your your bank's app. So whatever bank you're, you know, whatever debit card you're going to be using abroad. And I don't know if you attended the how to handle your money abroad um, workshop, which is the one that I did as well. Um, I recommend the Charles Schwab debit card and the recording is on our website under pre departure. So if you haven't, if you didn't attend the session, certainly check that out. Um, the Charles Schwab debit card will allow you to bank abroad without any um, foreign transaction fees or ATM withdrawal fees. And adding your bank's app to your phone, let's say you can't find your, your debit card or you think you, your wallet was stolen or you lost your wallet, you can go onto your phone, um, uh, go to your banking app and, and freeze the card until you know whether to cancel it or not. You can also check your balance while you're out and about. So it's a really useful um, app to have on your phone. Also, another money app is XE. There's XE.com, but the app is really cool and it converts, um, you know, currencies. So you can do US dollars to the local currency. So when you first arrive or if you're traveling and you want to see how much, you know, something is, you can just open up that app. And then I recommend that you, when you arrive in your study abroad um, location, that you consider getting the local transportation app. So, um, you know, I was in Italy in March visiting my daughter who just finished her study abroad program, and they don't use Uber in Italy, they use iTaxi. And that's the, you know, so she had me down iTaxi um, onto my phone, and then we could call taxis. And it works very similarly to, to Uber, but it's just the Italian version. Um, also, we had apps for buying train tickets in Italy, bus tickets, um, checking the, the train schedule. Um, I also downloaded an app when we were in Rome to buy my bus tickets. So you're going to want to find this out when you arrive, like what, what is, what's everybody using? You can certainly do Google research, you know, get online and, and Google this or talk to students who've studied in that location as well. I also recommend a local weather app um, in San Diego and in California in general, you know, our weather really doesn't vary much, but I know someone in the chat said they're going to Edinburgh. And Edinburgh can get a lot of rain. And I can tell you right now in Scotland, I think it's called the Metro app. Um, they don't look at like, you know, the weather on their iPhone because that's not reliable because weather can change hourly. So they actually use a um, weather app that shows radar and they can see, oh my gosh, you know, it's, it's sunny 
you know, this morning, but it looks like there's, you know, a storm coming my way. I'm going to need my umbrella this afternoon. So definitely ask about that as well, or, or do some research online about what would be the best weather app for where you're going. Um, TripAdvisor is another good app to put on your phone. Um, Yelp is not as common overseas, but TripAdvisor is worldwide. And it, you can look at um, reviews of restaurants, um, tours, hotels, pretty much everything. Um, so, and, and sites, you can see like, what are the 10 most popular sites in Paris? Um, so download the TripAdvisor app. You'll find it very useful when you're, when you're studying abroad. And then other travel apps, you know, if you're planning a weekend trip or doing some more traveling after or before the, your program, um, you might want to download Hopper. That's a way to find airline tickets. Hostel World is not just youth hostels, but they have um, inexpensive hotels as well. I like Kayak. I use Kayak a lot. There's Expedia, Priceline, all of it, Hotels.com. So whatever your preferred, um, you know, sites that you use if you're booking a hotel, um, put the app on. It just makes it easier. And then I already mentioned Lonely Planet, you know, is a guidebook series. Also, Rick Steves is very popular for Europe, but they, a lot of them will have, um, apps and they will offer like free audio tours like of the Louvre or um, you know different museums around the world the free city walking tours so um, you know take a look at that and um, you know when you're on wi-fi um, when you're going to a certain destination you want to see if they have any free audio guides that you, or, or walking maps that you can download so this is the last slide, and then we'll, we'll turn it over to questions if you have any. Um, you know, I always tell students, imagine that your phone is missing, you know, like it's either lost or stolen, or it just breaks, and you're traveling or you're out and about, um, and, you know, you don't have access to your phone. Um, when, when you're traveling to your study abroad destination, it's really important that you have your important documents printed out, not just saved on your phone, because again, like what if you, you know, your phone breaks and you don't have the address to where you need to get to, to check into your dorm or where your housing is. So make sure you print out important documents. And if you're doing weekend trips, same thing, have those, you know, have an address written down. I have a, in the picture here, the little field notes, write it down or print it out if you have access to a printer. Um, also for quick access, if you're using your phone when, when, you know, on a daily basis, if you, you know, you have to show your COVID, COVID vaccine card, it's a good idea to have it screenshotted and you can just pull it up on your phone and show it. Um, or if you're getting on the train, um, having your train ticket um, in your photo album or maybe in a folder on your, on your notes. Um, so um, that's, I like to take a screenshot and put it into a, into an album on my, in my photos and my daughter likes to save things in her folder under notes. So have the really important documents that you need in one easy place to find. You're not searching your email or, you know, scrolling through, you know, hundreds of pictures. I also recommend you have a portable charger with you and you're not going to pack this in your check bag. You're going to have it in your carry on and you're going to use it, in, you know, maybe carry it around in your backpack. If you know you're going to be out and about, you know, for, you know, all day into the evening and your phone doesn't hold a charge all day, get one of those portable chargers and have the phone cord with you. Um, I can't tell you how many times I've been on like 5% and I'm like, oh gosh, I need my phone to get me back to my hotel um, or get me onto the right bus. So make sure you have a portable charger that you take with you. You can always pick one up in country too. And then have that additional phone cord with you. If you don't have a portable charger, but you have a phone cord, you can always go into like a coffee shop or ask someone if you can plug in your phone for some extra, you know, an extra charge. Um, you know, charge it for 30 minutes just to get you home or whatever. Um, and a lot of, I'm, I'm guessing you might know about this, but most countries abroad don't use the same plugs. So you do need a plug adapter and you can um, search online for plug adapters for the location that you're going. You can buy them on Amazon or, or uh, you know, um, I don't, I think REI out on Convoy sells plug adapters. 
um, but you're going to need a plug adapter because you're not going to be able to just use your regular phone um, uh, plug, you know, in a in a um, South Korean plug. It's going to have different. It's going to look different. So uh, make sure you carry one of those if you know you're going to be out and about all day and you're worried about losing, you know, your your battery charge. Carry that with you. And then the last thing I wanted to mention is. Um, you know, and suggest is that you protect your phone while you're abroad. So get a good case because your phone is really like a mini computer. And so you want to make sure if you drop it that it's protected. Uh, screen protector is not a bad idea. Um, also be aware of where you're using your phone. So, um, you know, if you're if it's nighttime, you're standing on a street corner and you have your phone out in front of you, it's not common, but it can happen where maybe someone comes by and snatches your phone. Um, so just be aware of where you're using your phone and your surroundings. We don't want you to be looking at your phone either and, you know, you, you, you know, fall off a cliff or, you know, I, I think there was someone in Sydney that fell off the a pier in Sydney because they were looking at their phone. So pay attention to your surroundings for theft and for safety. Um, and then be careful where you keep your phone. So if you're on public transportation and it's crowded, don't put your phone in your back pocket. Americans do that all the time, but it can, it's so easy for a pickpocket or to just take it out of your back pocket. So have it in your front pocket or have it in a purse that's right in front of you and the, it's zipped. Um, I also know, you know, people will put their phone in, in when they're on the airplane in the little like um, pocket, you know, the seat pocket, and then they forget it when they get off the airplane. So pay attention to where you're putting your phone. Um, when you're out and about or, you know, on the airplane, um, you know, don't forget it. And then a lot of the travel insurance that you're going to be studying abroad with should cover loss or theft for your phone. Um, but it's just a good idea to just confirm your travel insurance that's included with your study abroad program. That if something, you know, if your phone is lost or stolen, that you um, can have it replaced. So the last thing I just want to mention is stay engaged. It's so easy with these iPhones or with the smartphones to, you know, really like be on Instagram and Snapchat and look at our screens all day. And, you know, the, these smartphones, you know, are really useful. Um, you know, I can't live without mine. And when I travel, I'm very dependent on it. But, you know, take time away from your phone, look, or, look around, experience, you know, living abroad, the day to day, and um, use it um, to help you, but not to take away from the experience. So that will take us to questions. And I just want to thank you all for being here today. I'm going to stop sharing um, my screen and I am going to stop recording as well.